we were dealing with the sounds of words, not the letters that make those sounds. Of course, we have to have a letter to make a sound. But simply the fact that you have two of the letter C showing up in the same line doesn't make the sound device. What are those letters, what sound are those letters making? That's the question. If the letter C sounds like S, then the S in the next word over counts as a sound device. You're repeating the same sound. If that letter C sounds more like a cut, then the K two, two words away is a sound device. You've got case, the, the C making a K or an S. It doesn't matter that it's a C. It's a matter that it's making that sound. That makes sense so far? Sounds are about the what of words? The sounds of words. Sounds are about the sound. It's kind of redundant, isn't it? But we want to avoid falling into the trap of it being about the letters. So the devices, the sound devices that we're dealing with. The first one is internal rhyme. We've dealt with end rhyme quite a bit already. Do you know how end rhyme works? Um, why are there fruit flies? Internal rhyme is within a line. It's internal to the rhyme, to the line. So in a single line of poetry, the same sound of a whole word repeats. For example, at this stage, it's all arranged to make a funny face. If that's all one line of poetry, end rhyme would be in the next line or two lines later, you have the word face rhyming with something else like grace or mace or place or chase. Well, that's not the deal here. We've got something going on inside the line. Stage and rage. Then rested he by the tum tum tree in the poem I just told you. Within the line, you have a rhyme. That's a very simple idea. If we're familiar with end rhyme, just do the same thing within the line. And the same thing can happen with near or slant rhyme. Inside the line or even end rhymes. You can do near rhyme, slant rhyme. Two words that almost rhyme. For example, most were lost. Last would also fit in. Last is a near rhyme. Cost. Most. Those are near rhymes. Cost and lost are exact rhymes. Right? And that's a, that's a perfect rhyme, whether it's in rhyme or internal rhyme. It's a perfect rhyme. But if you have near and bare, those are not exactly the same sound. Close enough that you can say, even using it for in rhyme, you kind of structure a stanza. A, B, A, B. If you have the B is near and the next B is bare, that's fine. That works as a rhyme. You can consider that part of the rhyme scheme. Have you noticed? I'm not talking about in rhyme as one of these devices. Why not consider in rhyme a sound device? Well, it is, technically. In rhyme is a sound device. And it's also part of form. I would be separating, separating in rhyme from other sound devices for this reason. Well, two reasons, basically. One is that you know it very well already. You already know how to do in rhyme. Of course, we've studied it, but even before we studied it, you knew how to use it. It's not, a, it's not a difficult thing to learn how to do. You already know how to do it. We don't have to add that in. Um, I want to, to be able to say, hey, Use some sound devices here and not have you start using in rhyme and consider that sound devices. The other thing is, in rhyme is a structural device. It's something that uses, that creates form. You use it to create stanzas, to, to make the, the stanzas kind of hold together. You don't have to do that to create stanzas, but that's one of the effects that it has when you use in rhyme. So I think it, it has a foot in the world of sound devices and it has a foot in the world of form. And we're going to basically shovel it all the way into form for the sake of this class, for the purposes we have here. All right, so in rhyme is not going to be one of our sound devices. Our technical we know it is. It can be considered that. Assonance, now we're going to get into a cluster of three where the sounds within the word, not the whole word, not the whole ending of the word, like stage or rage or lost or most, but just a part. There's a single, it might be even a single letter that makes that one sound. All three of these have that in common. Assonance, consonance, and alliteration. Assonance is when you have two or more words close together, usually within the same line or maybe one line apart or something like that. So then they have the same vowel sound. I think this is easier to remember if you just think of the half, the, the beginning letter in the word assonance. That's a vowel. Assonance is a vowel sound. It doesn't matter what letters are used to make that vowel sound. What matters is that the sounds are simple. How we pronounce the vowels. For examples, we have hide in 
inside the pipe. Consonants happening in that same little phrase, right? Can you find any other consonant sounds that repeat there? Sounds. It's not the letters you use to spell it, it's the sound. 